behavior supports, uh, assess the case study of a Baltimore City school. Um, just to sort of get uh, right into it, um, we have some discussion topics that I'm going to just cover this overview with you briefly, um, and we'll get into all of these topics a little more in depth as we go through the slides. Um, the first will be uh, the overview of SASE and uh, my qualifications. Um, New, Hope's prior, uh, New Hope's prior career before uh, SASE's intervention, um, student profiles and needs, um, our approach, program elements, um, how we work with students, parents, and try to gain trust in the community, uh, accelerating outcomes, um, success stories for a few of our students, and then outcome data. Um, there will also be a Q&A session uh, directly following uh, the presentation. A little bit about our company. Um, SESI is, um, as it says, a company that's built and run by educators. Uh, our purpose is to create partnerships with public schools. Ms. Kim, please file 212. Ms. Kim, 212. My apologies. Our, to create partnerships with public schools um, in order to address uh, K-12 students um, and to address specifically their academic, behavioral, and social-emotional needs. Um, we are very student-centric. Um, so every school uh, in the SESI line um, works uh, very one-on-one -on -one with students, uh, attempts to really know the student so that we can approach the student in a way that's meaningful to them. Um, we have two different sides of our uh, company, the special education side, uh, which works with students with emotional disabilities, um, students on the autism uh, spectrum, uh, students with specific learning disabilities, and then students with multiple disabilities. Um, and then the uh, alternative education uh, side, which deals with code of conduct violations. Um, these may be your students who are proposed for extended suspensions, um, truancy reduction and dropout recovery. Um, returning from outside placements, and then students uh, with IEP requirements. Um, uh, as you can see, we've had over 25 years of experience working with uh, the public schools and organizations. There are 55 plus schools um, or programs in 11 states and DC. Um, we have uh, more than 650 schools that we've served, um, and in some capacity, we've been able to uh, work with uh, over 75,000 students. Um, we have full state certification um, in all of the states that we service. And I know particularly in um, our district and our region, um, we've been able to develop some very positive relationships um, with our districts um, in order to sort of uh, expand so that we can touch the lives of other students and other parents um, who may be having some of the uh, difficulties that our students have. A fantastic picture of me. Um, this is a little bit about uh, me, your presenter. Um, as I said, my name is James Young. I've been with our company for 13 years. Uh, I sort of fell into special education uh, and within about um, a day of doing the job, realized that I loved it. Uh, I started as a teaching assistant um, at one of our schools in Dundalk, Maryland. Um, I became the director of that school. Uh, and then in 2008, they asked us to take over uh, what was then called Briscoe and Woodburn, which were two schools um, that were both working on two separate behavioral models housed in the same building. Uh, one was a middle school and one was a high school. Uh, currently, uh, I, I work at New Hope Academy, which is the renamed Briscoe and Woodburn. Uh, we serve uh, over 200 students. Um, and as it says, uh, my supervisor, Carrie Spees, has been uh, instrumental in helping us set this program up. Uh, I work with several other directors who are phenomenal um, and a staff that is completely dedicated to uh, positive student outcomes. Um, and, and so I couldn't be prouder of those people. Uh, our students, as a result of all of that support, have made tremendous, tremendous strides. Um, and as we know, progress looks different for every student in special education. Uh, but I would say across the board, we've seen progress with, with everyone that we've worked with. Before New Hope, uh, to go back a little bit to um, the previous incarnation of our school, Woodburn and Briscoe, um, that program uh, was supposed to house about 125 students. Uh, there were two police officers um, who were assigned to the building. Um, there were 
lots of arrests. Um, there were a significant amount of suspensions. Um, students weren't really given a lot of direction or structure, uh, and they would have the issues with the students kind of moving between the two programs, um, high schoolers running into the middle school, uh, fighting middle schoolers. Um, there was uh, a massive amount of gang affiliation um, and a massive amount of advertising that gang affiliation, which obviously caused tension uh, among the students, um, caused uh, a lot of disciplinary issues for the staff, um, and really uh, wound up with the Baltimore City staff who was working in this building being overtaxed. Um, and uh, as a result of that, um, you know, the majority of students, there, there was a massive attendance problem. Um, there was underperforming on standardized tests. Um, and so you had all of these, this is this sort of perfect storm of uh, issues happening at the school. Uh, when we did our initial tour, um, there was uh, a very harsh reaction against us even being in the building. Um, and after we took over, we had heard from the janitors, we would heard from um, you know people who came into the building to do maintenance that it was a very unsafe building, um, that at one point a student had pushed uh, one of the workers off of the scaffolding and uh, actually caused them to be in the hospital for several months. Um, the janitors in the building would lock themselves uh, in their office during the school day because they were afraid of being assaulted by the students. Um, and so, as I said, it was sort of the perfect storm of a school that had become dysfunctional and, uh, you know, the students were, were obviously crying out for some kind of support and structure. Some of the things that we did when we first came in, obviously we knew we had a, a difficult task uh, ahead of us to try to pull the reins back in and to get the school uh, back where it needed to be. Um, so uh, under the direction of um, Carrie Spees, our chief school director, um, we decided that we had to look at what the major problems were. Um, the first problem is, is that if a student doesn't feel safe, uh, then they're not going to feel like coming to school. So one of the things that we decided was that we were going to make every student in the building feel safe. Um, we immediately put into uh, action our positive uh, behavioral support system, um, which means that from classroom to classroom, the structure remains consistent. So every student knows that they're earning specific points uh, in order to um, be rewarded with incentives. Um, those categories are things like uh, following directions, remaining on task, using appropriate language, uh, being respectful to others. Um, so really, our, our main goal was to get students to interact in a socially positive way with each other and with the staff so that we could then start working on the next steps. Um, several things that we did uh, that sort of helped us in the beginning were ensuring that no students were in the hallway alone. We escorted students where they needed to go. Um, we always make sure that there is a teacher or a teaching assistant with any group of students or with any individual student at any given time. Um, we provided uh, supportive and therapeutic crisis intervention. So in this particular building, we have seven social workers uh, and two school psychologists. Uh, aside from that, every staff member is trained in crisis intervention um, and, of course, um, therapeutic holds if, if there's a need for that. Um, we also decided that we needed the students to take ownership of the building that they were in. Uh, and so as a result of that, uh, we came up with a, a tremendous amount of ideas that were generated by the students for things that they were interested in and for things that would make them happy to come to school. Um, that's where you get the uh, opportunities such as clubs, fairs, shows, and field trips. Um, we have a men's group where the students um, can go in and talk about issues specifically related to uh, you know, men and uh, a women's group that talks about uh, specifically you know, issues that, that they relate to women. Um, we also have a lot of activities um, regarding uh, music, art. Um, there are clubs for a lot of different things for the students that they've all generated. And so these were all ideas that they came up with so that they could take ownership of the things that they were doing in the building. Um, we also know that our students need a small learning environment. So uh, a ratio of one to four um, is ideal for them. And the way that that works is each cohort, each classroom, has somewhere between six and ten students um, with a teacher and a teaching assistant. 
Um, the student-focused behavioral and academic model, I, I, I sort of have gone over that, but just to reiterate, the most important part of that is consistency from staff member to staff member. Um, and that is something that requires maintenance and a significant amount of it. So as far as our professional practices go, um, you know, in dealing with teachers who are working through this model, uh, administrators have to constantly give feedback about how the model is working and things that we can tweak. Uh, a holistic student approach. Um, so uh, academic programming, currently uh, everyone here knows that the rage is the common core and everyone is working very hard to reach the common core. Um, there were some concerns uh, about the curriculum in the beginning with us uh, because we know that the common core is much more rigorous um, than the early state standards that we use. Uh, one of the things that we found is that by using our positive behavioral intervention system, we've been able to get the students engaged in the kind of learning that is required by the Common Core. Um, so there's a lot of group discussion. There's a lot of student-led discussion. This is another way that the students have really sort of, sort of started to feel like they've taken ownership um, of their learning, and it's given us a, a great opportunity to not only keep them engaged in the classroom, um, but also to see their, their true potential. Um, as a result of implementing um, our, our academic program, program, programming, I'm sorry, what we found is that um, we've seen a, a massive reduction um, in behavioral issues as well. Uh, behavioral programming, we've kind of touched on that. Um, there's a, a, a mixture of positive behavior support as well as the fact that uh, students know that if they're struggling, if they're frustrated, if they're angry in a the classroom, they always have an opportunity to speak with their social worker or their psychologist. Um, they also have an opportunity to speak with a preferred staff, um, take a walk outside of the classroom, or just take some time to, you know, uh, give themselves an opportunity to be able to articulate why they're frustrated in the classroom and have the teacher problem solved with them so that they can get back into the room. Um, supported related services. Um, uh, obviously, we work through each student's IEP. Um, so any related services that we see and can identify in the building, we build into their IEPs. Uh, student services can range, um, you know, from very intensive to uh, a little less intensive. And in our building, we have the luxury of being able to identify students who may be appropriate for a less restrictive environment. And so as we step down that IEP, we also have the opportunity to move students um, back into their home schools. Um, transition and life planning services. Um, we have amazing transition coordinators. Um, who actually focus on, number one, knowing the student, but also on knowing the student's interests and needs through TPIs and assessments. Um, we also work very closely in our transition department with students and soft skills. Um, we know that soft skills are something that is going to be very important uh, for our students as they go on job interviews, as they branch out, as they work toward, uh, you know, really leading a fulfilled life. Um, and so knowing how to shake somebody's hand and look somebody in the eye and, you know, give them an honest answer when they ask a question about uh, a mistake that they made. Those are really important skills for our students to have walking out of the building. Um, so not only is that built into our uh, behavioral model, but it also becomes a massive part of the transition program as well. Um, we have several partnerships um, that we've been uh, working on in our transition program also, and uh, I'll cover those um, in the next few slides. Uh, so, um, attendance, uh, we, we realized very early on that this was a fight, uh, especially in an urban school district uh, where most of the students are participating in uh, free and reduced meals. Um, attendance wasn't always on the forefront of our students' minds. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, they, they fall victim to uh, influences in their neighborhood. Um, sometimes they realize that they're able to make money um, in other places, and that immediate gratification of making money is more important than school for them. Um, however, we work very hard to make sure that we have incentives in place for the students who arrive at school. Um, there are uh, there's a, an economy here in the building where students attend, they are paid daily for attendance. Um, they're also paid daily based on their uh, behavioral sheet. Um, home visits and letters home are something that we're very aggressive about. We have attendance stat meetings every Monday in our building. Um, and those meetings actually cover 
um, students that we're worried about um, that haven't maybe shown up for two or three days. Um, and then those meetings actually generate a list of home visits um, that will go on. Um, as you can see, there is weekly parent-teacher contact, um, close monitoring, classroom engagement, therapeutic supports. Um, every staff member has really taken it on to address attendance with students. Um, graduation. Uh, unfortunately, uh, by the time we came into the building, there were some students who um, were significantly behind regarding their grades. Uh, you know, we inherited some students who were 19 uh, and in the ninth grade still. Uh, so credit recovery and assistance became uh, a major focus for us. Uh, bridge assistance. Uh, in Maryland, the high school assessment tests um, are required for graduation. However, with a lot of the needs that our students have, it's very difficult for them sometimes, whether it's anxiety or learning disabilities, to pass those tests. Uh, so we established a, a bridge classroom. Uh, the bridge is a way to pass the HSAs without actually having to uh, pass the uh, numeric score of the test. Um, tutoring, um, incorporation of STEM-based activities. Um, our SOS program partnership um, it's something that, that works hand in hand with our transition program as well. Um, that's an internship outside. So when the student graduates, we give them an opportunity to work in a chosen field through the SLS program. Um, paid tuition for dual enrollment in college classes. Uh, that is something that, you know, our, our students who express a, a desire to go to college uh, will sort of be training wheels for them in the beginning and uh, allow them to attend a college course uh, in the afternoons and come to school in the morning. And in the morning, we give them some time to sit down and do some remediation with them if they're having difficulty in their, in their course. Um, graduation counseling. Uh, our transition coordinators have set up junior and senior meetings for all of our juniors and seniors to talk to them about the importance of graduating. Um, also to discuss with them what their plans are and, and how to get uh, to, to the next level in their lives. Um, as I said, those soft skills are also a major focus uh, that we work on in our graduation counseling. Um, suspension reduction. Uh, I, I'm going to kind of go off of the slides for a minute and discuss just very briefly. Um, we found in our building that suspensions uh, are not effective for the students that we work with. Uh, the majority of students, when they're suspended, go home and play video games or go out and do the things that they want to do. Um, so some of the things that we really wanted to focus on were restorative justice items that actually made sense as a consequence um, for what the student would generally be suspended for. Um, an example uh, is we had a student who uh, punched several holes in the wall. So that student will be with us working on patching holes in the wall. Uh, and, you know, it, it gives us an opportunity to continue to work with the student and not to lose them. Um, and also gives the student an opportunity to connect the consequence to, to what, the, what the offense was. Uh, you know, we realized that when we suspended students uh, in the past, if we suspended the student for two days, we wouldn't see them again for five. Um, and so it ultimately affected the student's attendance and the student's drive to come to school. Uh, standardized test achievement. Uh, this is an area um, also where we've made uh, significant advances um, as far as uh, the students in our building. Um, by providing interventions um, by a reading specialist, uh, after school prep clubs, um, prep work during the school day. Uh, homeroom uh, is, is almost uh, focused daily on HSA prep, uh, a focus on expository and explanatory text, which relates directly to the Common Core. Um, and then hands on end activities obviously are, are very important for our students. Um, school facility enhancement. Um, Student mentors uh, has been very beneficial for us. Uh, we actually have a student who we stepped down recently um, who is doing her internship in our building as a student mentor for our middle school students. Um, developing aesthetically pleasing hallways and common areas. Um, we have an amazing staff and a very creative staff. Um, over the summers, they spend a lot of time painting murals in our hallways. Um, a lot of things related to New Hope and New Hope Pride. Um, which are, are things that allow our students to take ownership and to feel good about the place that they're in. Um, collaborative and cross-curricular planning time for teachers, um, displays of student work, um, posting of positive reinforcements. And one of the other major enhancements is uh, something that we've been participating in and working on for the past four years is a fully functional interdisciplinary leadership team of teachers who we trust um, to be innovative 
and to uh, lead other teachers uh, in, in uh, a drive toward increased academics for our students. Uh, gaining trust with the community um, and, and our parents. Uh, we have an open door policy. Anyone is allowed to come in whenever they like. Um, we have uh, created connections um, through monthly parent meetings, but also through partnerships um, with other programs uh, who our students go back and forth between. Um, we encourage, uh, obviously, our parents to come in and voice their concerns to us. Um, no matter how uh, frustrated or upset a parent is, uh, we always want to be solution focused with our parents. Um, and that's part of that transparency as well. We want the parents to know what we're doing to work with their students. Um, so even if a parent is upset, angry, um, frustrated with the program, we want them to have an opportunity to see what we do and to see the gains their students have made. So it all comes down to what we've learned. Um, there are a lot of lessons that we learned. Uh, but the main one uh, that I was actually a, a little surprised about was that um, Number one, every student in this building has a desire to, to succeed. They, they want structure. Um, whether or not they fight it, whether or not they curse at staff members, are disrespectful to staff members, have a difficult time, they want that structure and support. And after they're used to it, they appreciate that structure and support. And it's amazing the number of students we've had that started out very tough that have come to us after graduation and thanked us. Uh, and um, there are a lot of uh, touching moments in the building. Uh, second, once students receive the support they require, they realize success is attainable. Uh, that's very true. And once the students realize success is attainable, they want more of it. Uh, and they want more of those pro-social relationships with people. Um, and with the right people dedicated to a mission, you can get it done. Uh, I, it's Mike's, uh, the president of our company's philosophy that anyone can see this model. Um, but you can't do it without the right people. Uh, and I thoroughly believe in that. We spend a lot of time in our programs making sure that we have the right people working with our kids um, and following the model that we've created. Success stories. Uh, Malcolm Morris is a student of ours who graduated uh, in 2011. Uh, he currently attends UMBC um, for computer science. Um, and uh, He's, he's a, a fantastic success story. Uh, James Wimbush is another student who currently attends our program. Um, and that's where the quote at the top comes from. I was tired of holding myself back and I wanted to make a change. Um, James has certainly made major behavioral strides um, and has been um, just very focused uh, even now uh, as we speak in his classroom on academics. Uh, so the results. Um, were a 100% increase in academics. Um, we also had a graduation rate that doubled each year um, since the program's inception. Um, current graduation rate of students is 83.3, um, earning a diploma via HSA scores and the Bridge Program. Um, we also have um, one, uh, about 100 new students added to the program. Um, our attendance is up in the middle school and the high school. Um, so in the middle school, we're at 79.7%, which is a 19% increase. Um, high school, 66.1, which is up 36%, which is amazing. Um, and the average total is 72.9. When you look at the transient population that we work with and the fact that students are often hospitalized or incarcerated, uh, to me, those are fantastically encouraging numbers. Um, We've lowered our suspension rate uh, in just a year from 41% to uh, less than 1% um, due to our restorative justice actions. Um, as I said before, the increase in test scores speaks for itself. Uh, I won't read all the numbers off, um, but this is due to the hard work of our teachers and our students uh, and being able to provide that structure and support that allows them to actually sit still and learn in a classroom. Uh, just a little uh, note on the top, um, in 2010-2011, we were awarded the most improved school culture, uh, and that was presented by Baltimore City Schools, which was major for us to receive uh, accolades from the district. Uh, I'll open it up um, for a question and answer period at this time, Suzanne, if that uh, works. 
Yes, I'm unmuting the different folks. If you want to ask any questions. Out. Um, Is there an attendee who would like to ask a question? Okay. Um, you know what, I will send um, an email around afterwards and if anyone would like to email any questions, we are more than happy to answer them. That's perfect. Thank you everybody for uh, your participation today.